Dear colleagues, I would like to introduce our colleague from Turku University, Dr. Tessa T. Sturley. So actually he works in the department of biochemistry, but he's real biophysics be sure, biophysicist will be sure in this. And uh, actually uh, uh, he's uh, at the right uh, place now, I think, uh, and uh, he has the right auditory here. And uh, actually, uh, uh, normally uh, he studies photosynthesis, and uh, 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 this is not his uh, uh, first presentation here in our department. He already gave one, I think, two years or three years ago. So uh, he uh, gave a talk about very interesting uh, plastic in our story. Uh, but today he will talk about photo inhibition. He's a profound expert in photo inhibition. And he has his own hypothesis on the uh, mechanism of photo inhibition, and he will present it uh, today. Uh, so he will talk about the basic mechanism of photo inhibition and also present his uh, latest uh, results. So I think that we can start, and then whatever is comes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Taras, for the introduction. <laughs> asked me to uh, present some general data about for the exhibition of our students as well so because uh, 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 so I will not only uh, look at look at um, the recent results but also some introduction so um, the digital particle membrane just to, uh, to uh, have the first slide for those who uh, might not be studying photosynthesis in adequate uh, membrane. We have photosystem for two, uh, photosystem one, cytochrome complex, and the ACP synthase. And what we are uh, now, uh, oh, there is a pointer somewhere. Oh, here? No, not there. On the shelf. On the shelf? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And this one. This Yes, and uh, what I am speaking about now is for the uh, inhibition of system 2. There is a definitely uh, for the inhibition of system 1 as well, but uh, that uh, reaction is uh, quite different from what happens in system 2, and, and I'm not. I'm not um, uh, touching that too much. So, um,
species, which is not a free radical, and therefore singletoxicin is so uh, 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 oxidative because it can easily take a pair of electrons to this completely free, free uh, uh, orbital. So in the case of oxygen, being a free radical makes it less reactive. Uh, this is kind of paradoxical for most chemists who think that free radicals are always reactive. Signet oxygen is a radical because it's not a free radical. Anyway, signet oxygen is usually um, made by um, exchange of uh, energy and, uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, spin between a triplet state of a pigment molecule and a uh, normal triplet oxygen, uh, which uh, uh, this meeting uh, ends up with uh, a single state of oxygen, which is an excited state, and the ground state of the pigment molecule, which is also a single state. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the most common uh, mechanism by single oxygen formation. And chlorophyll is very good in making single oxygen. So if you put chlorophyll solution uh, to a window and wait for some time, it will bleach, and mostly because uh, it uh, uh, makes single oxygen, and the single oxygen reacts with chlorophyll. That uh, destroys the chlorophyll itself. <coughs> in photosystem, uh, photosynthesis, uh, it is usually considered that uh, most singlet oxygen, I mean, the results also show that most singlet oxygen comes from photosystem 2. Photosystem 1, even though it uh, has uh, the possibility of the triplet uh, formation of the triplet P700, does not make much singlet oxygen. Also, the antenna treatments do not seem to be important uh, producers of singlet oxygen. So, um, uh, the triplet state of the primary donor is the most important singlet oxygen producer in, uh, in photosystem 2 and in whole uh, photosynthetic uh, system. So, now we go to photo inhibition of photosystem 2. So, um, it's uh, well known that light can inactivate photosystem 2. Uh, this, I call this photo inhibition, many people have different definitions for the word. So uh, for, uh, when we go from active photosystem 2 in the light to an inactive state, that is called photo inhibition, then a recovery process starts. And it starts by degradation of the D1 protein. Of course, it must then also be synthesized. Um, we, in vivo, if we want to study this process without the interference of uh, this simultaneous recovery, we have to use an antibiotic which stops synthesis of the human protein so we can look at uh, the uh, loss of active photosystem 2 without uh, this uh, recovery process. Uh, we can, of course, study also for the inhibition in uh, isolated <coughs> systems where this recovery so D1 synthesis does not function at all, so then we don't need lincomycin for the experiment. But uh, I will focus on this uh, uh, damaging reaction and uh, on uh, uh, whether it is inactivation of the manganese complex, as we have suggested, or whether it is damaged by single toxicity, or whether it is something completely uh, different. And, uh, I am apologizing because I will not give you a definite answer, but I will hopefully be able to give you some uh, ideas uh, to, uh, uh, to um, <coughs> nourish uh, your uh, scientific interest. Uh, we measure photo inhibition uh, quite easily because it is a very clear first order reaction. These are just different experiments with photo inhibition, so we can define rate constant of photo inhibition, <coughs> which is basically, of course, the, the initial rate of the reaction. Um, and um, here we should remember that this can only be measured either in isolated system or if we measure it in vivo, we always use lincomycin 
lincomycin is the antibiotic which <coughs> human proteins resynthesis otherwise we are uh, not measuring the uh, uh, damaging process alone. Uh, there are lots of suggested mechanisms for photo inhibition. Uh, coming back from the 90s, there was the mechanism called acceptor site photo inhibition. Um, uh, I will go through all this. Uh, uh, this is just the list now. Then there is a donor site uh, photo inhibition mechanism, and there is a suggestion that actually photo inhibition is. Uh, uh, not initiated in photosystem at all, but some signotoxicin that comes from the outside of active photosystem too could cause for the inhibition. Then there are several mechanisms about uh, uh, for the inhibition being caused by... Excuse me for... I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard you, uh, you would have to be in some kind of... Yes. Uh, then uh, um, there are several uh, mechanisms about uh, how cytotoxicin uh, that uh, would cause photoinhibition would be uh, uh, produced in photosystem two by the recombination reactions. Uh, the recombination reactions are uh, the only important way, way by which uh, the triplet state of uh, uh, P680 could be formed uh, in any, uh, any big amount. And there are basically, there is a suggestion that the slow recombination reactions, uh, which are a combination uh, of uh, QA minus B, uh, with the estates of uh, uh, the oxygen volume complex, could cause uh, formation of single oxygen, or then uh, possibility that the recombination of the primary radical pair uh, in, the, uh, in the presence of uh, 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 reduced QA could also form uh, signotoxicin. And then there is our uh, suggestion about uh, direct uh, excitation uh, by light of the manganese ions of the oxidative complex, uh, which uh, uh, for which there is actually a consensus that uh, in the UV uh, region uh, of light this uh, will cause photoinhibition, but we have also suggested that this might be the basis for photoinhibition in uh, uh, the visible range. Um, there is a variant of this mechanism which is called the two-step mechanism by the uh, Japanese uh, 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 group uh, started with uh, Nori Murata and, and uh, Yoshitaka Nishia a long, long time ago, um, um, who stress the idea uh, that the, uh, if you uh, destroy somehow the manganese complex first, then that will cause uh, later damage. Uh, to photosystem two. Uh, uh, I am calling this just a variant of the manganese mechanism and I do not really want to call it two-step. Uh, the first reason for this is that there is a lot of uh, evidence that photoinhibition is a one-step, uh, one photon mechanism, that we do not need two photons for photoinhibition. Second, reason is that it seems that this manganese, uh, whatever happens to manganese, it is uh, irreversible. And uh, if we have an irreversible damage to the oxygen evolving complex, whatever happens thereafter is beating the dead horse. And uh, of course that will be, there, there will be second steps and uh, third step and whatever for photoinhibition, but it does not affect the kinetics of loss of, it, loss of activity if the activity is already uh, uh, lost in an uh, irreversible way. Um, therefore, uh, uh, I am not a proponent of the name two-step, although it is just the same mechanism. Let's go through this uh, mechanism, certainly. So, um, 
when there is, uh, this is the has historical acceptance type mechanism. The idea is that uh, that there is a, a block in the um, acceptor side of uh, photosystem two. A uh, block can be created there by strong light. If you have a strong light, then all the electron acceptors of photosystem two will be reduced, and therefore there is no electron uh, flow from QA forward. And uh, what happens then? According to the idea of the mechanism, that, that QA is bombarded with electrons and then it is double reduced. Uh, this uh, mechanism uh, is more or less historical nowadays because uh, already in the 90s it was shown that this uh, um, bombardment never creates. Uh, um, double reduced photos, uh, QA uh, electron acceptor except for in, in special cases in vitro in uh, anaerobic conditions and uh, therefore uh, uh, it cannot explain for the division in vivo for example which is never uh, uh, anaerobic completely. Uh, then uh, well the evidence uh, for this mechanism <coughs> that when you release the anaerobic conditions I mean if you would put isolated thylakoids in something like uh, 10,000 microns size of light for some time uh, uh, then you release the anaerobic conditions and the bubble the system with oxygen you get a huge amount of single oxygen produced uh, which uh, is um, in good agreement with the idea that this uh, species here is double reduced and protonated, does not uh, uh, limit the lifetime of the primary radical pair. Yes, so sorry, but when are you talking about anaerobic conditions? You are meaning okay, it's a strict anaerobic conditions? Yeah, it must be a relatively strict, but again, with isolated dialects, you can get quite. For example, if you are use. Uh, Glucose, glucose oxidase system, I can get it at the double reduction of Q, the QA? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think they used uh, in, they did not use glucose oxidase system in uh, in those old experiments. Um, I think they used uh, 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 some kind of uh, Thank you. public system. But um, I have to tell you, these are uh, Experiments by Robust in the 90s, uh, so uh, uh, I have tried, never tried to repeat it. So you have tried to uh, get uh, double reduction. Yeah, it, it uh, has turned out to be very difficult to get the double reduction, also for internet. So, but how did they show that it is uh, doubly reduced QA? Did they use EPR or something? They used EPR and they also used biochemical techniques to show that the QA was going away. Oh, okay. So it is not only double reduced, but, but with very long and harsh treatment, you will see that it slowly goes away. And the explanation for the going away is that it is getting uh, protonated after double reduction and then there is no uh, binding of, of the species anymore. Uh, so it releases it to solution? In solution, okay. yeah. No, 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 but I, I think that uh, yeah. it is, uh, when we are saying that it's a double reduction, it's correct because otherwise you cannot release. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. after the yeah, yeah. double reduction yeah. it yeah. becomes very hydrophobic and so yeah. therefore. Yeah, but the, um, uh, the experimental conditions for this are also relatively high. So uh, you cannot do it with something like sunlight intensity. You have to go to much higher light intensities as well. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is the only other reason why this is... <coughs> usually people consider this historical because uh, uh, it is kind of a possibility to get inhibited photosystem to However, not very uh, probably the, 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 the thing that happens in, uh, in milder conditions, which are usually applied by uh, okay. well, these uh, Also, a small minor question. 
if quark creates an exist, why fluorescence is goes down maximum fluorescence? Uh, well, just to, to understand that, that, more. that is a, that is a very good question uh, to which I don't I don't remember what happens to the maximum fluorescence uh, when they uh, in these conditions where they have shown that the QA is, is slowly released. As far as I remember, they. Uh, uh, they uh, obtained uh, the fluorescence actually going down mm -hmm. finally. But in those conditions, when you have very high light, you have several processes uh, occurring at the same time. You have a bleaching of chlorophyll somewhere, mm -hmm. and you will have uh, also, uh, I mean, that will increase first the fluorescence, and then it will decrease when the chlorophyll starts to, to uh, do uh, damage to the, mm -hmm. to the other parts. So it's uh, uh, the fluorescence changes in this kind of situation where the QA is released. It is, uh, I think, they are not really relevant to, uh, to uh, the milder conditions or in the conditions. Okay. Um, then we have the daughter side for the division. Um, this is um, uh, actually. Um, uh, <coughs> this was studied already in the in the eighties um, by looking at what happens if you um, simply wash out or reduce the manganese complex and wash it out with something like uh, hydroxylamine and uh, then illuminate uh, for the system two. Uh, what happened uh, was uh, clearly the inhibition of uh, the remaining of the uh, remaining activity of uh, photosystem two, uh, of course, if the unmanganese complex is uh, not there, uh, there is no oxygen evolution. So the remaining activities are the electron transfer activities from here, and uh, uh, it was clear that something happens, and uh, the explanation uh, was that the P680 plus, which uh, then remains there in the uh, during illumination because it's not getting an electron from the oxygen evolving complex, it will re uh, oxidize something which is not uh, which it is not meant to oxidize, and um, this has led to uh, an idea that perhaps. This same happens uh, in normal conditions where the oxygen evolving complex is uh, just fully functional because we know that there are, uh, uh, that it is not always uh, delivering an electron to uh, the P680. Sometimes uh, it is uh, not doing its work and then it might be that in this case the P680 is actually uh, doing the same thing as it is doing if this is uh, chemically. Um, uh, destroyed. So this is not actually a kind of a hypothetical mechanism. Um, it is well known that this mechanism, uh, uh, basically everybody agrees that this mechanism functions if we have the manganese complex chemically inactivated. But whether it happens when it is just stochastically inactive in vivo, that is uh, matter of the discussion, uh, it is not generally accepted. Um, in these damages, uh, oxygen is not important. And uh, this is an important thing. So if, the, if you damage the manganese complex, you do not need to supply oxygen to get damaged by T680 plus, because uh, oxidation of uh, nearby pigment or even protein uh, Residues by the P680 plus would not be dependent on oxygen. <coughs> okay, then there is a suggestion that uh, uh, singlet oxygen or perhaps some other uh, reactive oxygen species could be created outside of system 2. And there are some action spectra uh, measurements that might actually such. Uh, support this idea, although uh, this is not so much uh, um, uh, discussed nowadays. The site of singlet oxygen production outside 
would be, for example, the antenna uh, molecules, chlorophyll of oxygen two that would be cool that are created to the, the states of chlorophyll and, and then make see the um, Then the rapid charge recombination. When we have QA, there is an electron already in QA, and then we have charge separation. There's uh, no way for the electron to go forward, so it will come back. This, uh, in some cases, produces uh, excited state of the uh, um, primary donor, and in some cases, the primary donor uh, actually uh, gets uh, to the triplet state, and this triplet state uh, is a triplet of a pigment, it can react with oxygen and uh, create single oxygen which uh, would cause damage. Um, this uh, uh, mechanism has the uh, obvious problem uh, that um, the singlet oxygen or triplet yield of the recombination of the primary radical pair uh, when the QA has an electron is uh, uh, very low because uh, the, uh, creating the triplet from the primary radical pair you need time for the spring defacing that, that time is uh, usually something like 10 nanoseconds and the lifetime of the, the, uh, the uh, ra primary radical pair when QA is, uh, is uh, Reduced in this uh, rather thicker than nanoseconds. So yes, we are talking yeah. about under steady state conditions. Under steady state Only. conditions, yeah, like like steady state condition where you have uh, where you have uh, like uh, I mean I'm trying to find uh, describe mechanisms that would work in the light in in vivo or something like this. Yeah. Okay, then. There is a mechanism which definitely causes uh, the formation of triplet with high yield, and this is uh, when we have uh, normal charge uh, separation uh, and we have uh, enough time. Electron goes to QB, and um, and uh, P600 uh, plus is reduced by the oxygen evolving complex, but then for some reason the you, you wait for uh, 10, 20 seconds, and then uh, if there is no other electron coming, then the electron from QB it will, uh, depending on temperature, it will uh, not feel well and it will re uh, come back. And they combine with the, the hole which was in the, in the manganese complex, and uh, then the chances of getting triplet state of the primary donor are very high. Uh, this um, definitely will produce uh, uh, triplet state and, and, and singlet oxygen. The only problem is that uh, I was speaking about uh, 30 seconds or 20 seconds, so this reaction is uh, rare. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, it uh, does not seem to have uh, an easy way to uh, to um, create a lot of signal toxicity. Um, there so is it, yeah. Sorry, but what about the combination between QA minus and S plus state? Oh yes, that is uh, uh, that faster. is uh, that is uh, faster. Uh, uh, and actually, I'm going to discuss that thing separately. Um, uh, it is faster, but of course it happens only if you have uh, your system poisoned with something like calcium, uh, then uh, you are getting a lot of recombination from uh, your minus. Uh, but there are redox potential effects uh, in uh, both photo inhibition and singlet oxygen production, which uh, support the idea that, uh, that the recombination reactions are, uh, are important. Uh, if you uh, uh, if you play with the um, uh, with the redox potential of either the graphite in graphite in minus pair or, or QAQ minus pair, uh, you will uh, get less C 
in the process and, and you will get also get less for the mutants in which uh, uh, in which the uh, recombination um, uh, reaction is uh, modified in such a way that the um, uh, recombination will uh, less probably cause the uh, production of the excited state or the primary donor, uh, which is the only uh, state where we can have uh, the, uh, the treatment as well. You understand correctly that what, uh, whatever the way for recombination is, it always goes through the excited state of chlorophyll. Because no. to form triplet state, you've got to have the excited yes. state of single chlorophyll. Then, yes, uh, you are right. But the recombination produces an uh, excited state in only relatively rare cases. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, some most people have calculated that it's normally about uh, three percent. And uh, it's even possible with these uh, redox potential of mutations to reduce that, to that probability to smaller. And if you reduce the probability of getting a, an excited state from the re recombination reaction, then you will uh, get less cytotoxicity. And you also get less protein in those mutants. So, so you mean, do you mean uh, uh, excited state, repeat excited state? Or uh, you you there, get, uh, basically, you, 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 if you reduce the probability of getting single excited state, you will also reduce the probability of getting triplet excited state. Uh, very, uh, uh, it will be the same, uh, same redox potential effect will cause both. So you will get less thermoluminescence and you will get less... Uh, in all cases, the source of synthet oxygen is the chlorophyll triplet state. Yes. No matter what the quantum yield of its formation is. Nevertheless, I have this the only source of the producing the toxin. Yes, so this is at least uh, the consensus in the field. Um, there are some reports uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, actually there could be signal toxicity production by uh, um, iron sulfur centers if you uh, illuminate with uh, blue green or, uh, or ultraviolet uh, light, which is uh, well absorbed by, by iron, you would also get signal toxicity. And there's also the possibility for the excite from the chlorophyll excited state either to convert the, the chlorophyll molecule into the triplet state or to give the backward energy migration to the antenna complex. Because yeah. the the experiments we did which have been published and well known is that when we block, for example, by DC whatever, the electron flow from QA, you have the recombinant fluorescence. And the long-term recombinant, about two nanoseconds, appears. Normally, it's three hundred picoseconds, all well, the average, yeah. average uh, coming from the antenna. But when you go the direct electron flow, you have the recombination followed by the long-term <coughs> two, two, one, two nanosecond uh, fluorescence coming from the backward migration to the antenna. Yeah. That, that's the yeah. And so the byproduct is still the triplet set of chlorophyll, which is formed at very low quantum yield. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, I guess I understand that yes. correct, but that's the combination of different yeah. events. Yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, also in, in uh, also in this case uh, uh, when you have the uh, the uh, something like two nanosecond uh, long fluorescence, you will uh, basically have more uh, triplets in the, in the antenna, among the antenna chlorophylls. Yeah, yeah. It seems that they, uh, they are not very good at making uh, 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 the single doses and still, and the reason probably is uh, that uh, if there is a block of uh, oxygen uh, going to the antenna, I mean, the, the antenna is, uh, uh, is somehow okay. protected, yeah, so, so even if there are some triplets, uh, oxygen is not going there, there to, to meet them. And uh, that's, uh, uh, that's probably the reason why there seems to be quite little uh, 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 
single box then from the antenna. Okay. Let's go forward. Then the mechanism, mechanism which we suggested because of the uh, of the axis spectrum of photo emission. The idea is this: there is a direct uh, excitation of the manganese, uh, <coughs> which uh, we have shown that there is a, a both in ultraviolet and visible light. But here I have to uh, tell that we also used quite high intensity of visible light. Uh, but we saw that the manganese, uh, uh, there was loss of manganese uh, from uh, uh, for the system too. And uh, uh, now we have tried uh, desperately to see if the manganese which is lost, if it can come back and discover the activity with just by incubating the thylakoid membranes by themselves. But, uh, uh, or if there is any other indication that this could be, uh, could be uh, reversible. But I put a big cross here. Uh, once you have inactivity for the system 2, it will only recover by synthesis of the D1 protein, not uh, uh, with, uh, by rebinding of manganese. And that, this means that uh, what I said is that whatever second steps there are after this, they are really beating the dead horse because uh, uh, this, uh, this, um, there will be probably uh, both um, uh, oxidation by uh, the P600 plus like uh, in any uh, um, uh, mechanism that uh, uh, happens after inactivation of the manganese complex. Yeah, there can even be uh, production of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, triplet P680 and, uh, and uh, uh, singlet oxygen. Uh, however, whatever happens after this, this will not uh, give any explanation to something like the action spectrum of our institution because uh, the, the activity was already lost in the first. So just uh, uh, as a summary, the access spectrum, uh, acceptor side mechanism does not really uh, fit with the action spectrum of all the inhibition I will show, show to you uh, this uh, soon. Uh, the <coughs> light response does not fit because low light causes for the inhibition, the light response curve of photo inhibition is very strange because it is like a straight line. Um, I will show you the light response curve of photo inhibition is like this. So the, here we have PPFD and here we have the rate constant of photo inhibition. And uh, this is of course straight uh, uh, for uh, anything that happens in photosynthesis because we would expect some kind of uh, uh, saturation or threshold uh, or whatever, but those do not exist for photosynthesis. And also this thing we already discussed. Uh, with the donor side mechanism, we do not have a good fit with the action spectrum because action spectrum of photosynthesis shows that uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation is most uh, uh, effective and uh, there is no real uh, reason for this in the action spectrum uh, of donor side uh, in the donor side mechanism also the singlet oxygen does not have any role in uh, the donor side mechanism and we know that there are some uh, um, <coughs> Compounds that protect against signal oxygen, they also protect against protein. So, donor site mechanism cannot be uh, the only one that happens. Uh, this idea that the uh, signal oxygen is produced, produced outside the, the reaction center, uh, they uh, <coughs> are difficult to understand with regard to the fact that photoinhibition occurs in anaerobic conditions. Um, uh, 
this is also quite difficult to uh, to it is also difficult to explain why we have uh, uh, why we have anaerobic common uh, photon emission if synaptoxin wherever it is produced it, uh, how it why, how it cause photon emission then uh, those slow reactions uh, mainly the problem is that they are too slow but I will so, soon show some results to so uh, uh, let's get rapidly out of this list we already discussed most of these things uh, so um, I will discuss uh, uh, this uh, if the action spectrum of photo emission is actually uh, uh, so universal that we would uh, blame the manganese complex for all photo emission and especially if the antenna complex uh, organization affects uh, uh, the action spectrum of photo emission this is this question is important because if the antenna composition affects then it is not possible that the manganese ions alone are uh, the, the acting as the, 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 the photoreceptor of the Then the second question uh, about signal toxicity, and uh, I will show you a little bit uh, signal toxicity and point cell experiments and anaerobic experiments, which uh, are testing if signal toxicity is, is, is working. And then uh, with regard to particular mechanisms, I will show you especially temperature uh, dependency of uh, the intuition. And let's go to uh, uh, shortly to the action spectrum which I was discussing. So this is the action spectrum of photo emission. Um, this is from Arabiotis means three different uh, mutants and the one type. But uh, what you see is there is a very low uh, efficiency of photo emission. The visible range from 400 to 700 nanometers and then it goes to uh, up like uh, here we have the whole spectrum to, to 100 times higher uh, 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 rates in, in the ultraviolet range down to uh, 250 nanometers. And if we try to look at uh, this uh, spectrum uh, together with the uh, absorption spectra of different uh, uh, manganese compounds which are made to uh, uh, mimic the oxygen evolving complex, we see some kind of resemblance. So here all these lines are from different manganese compounds and then uh, their absorption spectra and these dots they are uh, uh, action spectrum measurements from photo emission uh, starting from Wester Cox measurements from uh, in the 60s and there are also our measurements uh, you see that there is a resemblance but uh, not really enough to constitute the proof in the physical range um, so this led to the uh, basically to this manganese uh, 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 hypothesis which I discussed. So let's look uh, with the important thing with the uh, visible range of the uh, action spectrum is whether it is because uh, we do not know what is the, uh, the absorption spectrum of the natural manganese complex it might have some bumps uh, we have a lot of absorbs so what we have done is we have tried uh, photo inhibition in organisms which, uh, in which uh, the absorption spectrum is different from what it is in, in higher plants so this is a diatom ferdactylum trichornotum and you can see that the action spectrum of photo inhibition is there quite similar as it is in, in higher plants but here is the absorption spectrum of uh, this uh, organism and uh, here is the action spectrum of photo emission and you see that there is a resemblance uh, between the uh, visible light part of the, uh, of the uh, action spectrum of photo emission and the absorption spectrum very similarly with uh, uh, marine cyanobacteria, these are, uh, uh, are uh, pro two, two uh, uh, species of Prochlorococcus and one marine cyanococcus. You see that they have uh, 
uh, they had different uh, wavelength for the red absorption peak uh, because these two species uh, have uh, actually these two have uh, um, different uh, type of uh, colorful A. They have the, uh, the non-reduced form that is uh, peaking its absorption a little uh, uh, toward uh, the blue. And you see that in, in action spectrum of television we have a similar shift. There are also other uh, peaks in the action spectrum of television showing that actually the uh, absorption spectrum of the organism is affecting the, uh, the antenna composition affects photonics, which means that uh, unfortunately uh, my manganese mechanism is not, uh, it is universal, yes. yes. However, what about who absorbs, who does absorb light, ultraviolet light? Sorry? Ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light, who it's absorbs, mostly. Who absorbs, who in, this absorbs in this case? Uh, in this case, uh, well, um, there are, uh, of course, uh, in ultraviolet there are huge, uh, there is a huge number of absorbers. Uh, whatever you put to the spectrometer and start to go to the ultraviolet, you see that, uh, uh, that, um, uh, uh, what's the source of oxygen? In the case of ultraviolet and red light, is it the same source? In ultraviolet no light, what the mechanism in ultraviolet light, yeah. in ultraviolet light, there is actually quite little production of singlet oxygen. Uh, in especially in ultraviolet A, when you go to ultraviolet B, uh, uh, 280 nanometers, uh, then you start to see uh, production of singlet oxygen because of absorption by. Uh, 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 proteins. I mean, by, uh, by, protein. by 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 the uh, aromatic amino acids and um, use of proteins. So the yeah. source. So yeah. it is that one, red light, the source of chlorophyll exogen. Yeah. But ultraviolet is different. Yeah. Yeah, but it is much much less uh, production of singlet oxygen in ultraviolet light. Yeah. 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 If you recalculate the uh, source vector in a number of molecules. Uh, single toxin molecules formed by per one quantum. Yeah. Then we have another idea of what's what's more effective or less effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, but uh, but really, the, there is uh, there is basically very little uh, single toxin models and do preparations in the world. Okay. So uh, this tells us that the man that the manganese mechanism is not working alone. Then let's look at the temperature dependence um, of photon emission, which is, uh, um, there is a mild temperature dependence. The higher temperature you go, the faster photon emission goes. And it is interesting that it is uh, universal. We have tried uh, many different, uh, here we have only two, two uh, the sinicosystems, which is an, um, uh, organism living at uh, 32 degrees, uh, it's a cyanobacterium, and uh, this is uh, thylakoids from pumpkin, which is a normal higher plant living at 20 degrees approximately, and uh, we have more or less the same uh, temperature dependence. We have also tried other uh, uh, materials, and, and we did the same. Uh, it's also, as you can see here, this is similar in vivo and in vitro. And what is important that there is a lot of photon emission uh, around uh, five degrees. Uh, so uh, uh, it's actually quite uh, difficult to uh, assume that the slow recombination reactions could be affecting here because they do not uh, function at these low temperatures. We actually even measured uh, the rate uh, the temperature dependency of the rate of the slow re recombination reactions, both for SQ, S2QA minus recombination and S2QB minus recombination with thermoluminescence, and uh, we get uh, this kind of uh, temperature dependence. It's actually quite similar for both the combination reactions, the temperature dependence of the, the rate constant 
and uh, these are obviously two different curves. So I'm uh, putting a cross over the possibility that the slow recombination reactions could be affecting for the division significantly. <coughs> this is actually, um, uh, there is a suggestion that uh, those slow recombination reactions uh, do inhibit photoresistance too if you do photo inhibition with single short laser flashes. And uh, this is what we did. The laser flashes uh, inhibit photoresistance too. This is uh, well known from uh, Itza Koha's measurements a uh, long time ago. Uh, and if you have the flashes separated with longer period of darkness in between, you actually get more inhibition per flash. Is it saturating? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, we have tested the saturation, and uh, uh, they, uh, 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 the the inhibition is dependent on the intensity of the flash. But they are all the time saturating. I mean, they are uh, to get some inhibition. You have to have uh, oversaturating flashes. If you try flashes which do not saturate photosystem two, then you are not seeing any inhibitions. The measure of photo inhibition, the result. The, the yeah, just that we just take absorption the decrease. Of no, we, we, we measure oxygen evolution. Uh, oxygen evolution. Yeah. So we just the flash the, the sample, take it away. By measuring oxygen evolution directly. Yeah. yeah well, we the, no, I mean, we, we the, we the oxygen the result, electron. It's by the way, you did measure the result of inhibition. You yes. measure this the oxygen production as the possible, well, a reasonable source for the inhibition, yeah? Uh, so this is a reasonable sign of the What I'm driving at is this 30 seconds of flash of interval. It's yeah. quite a uh, long dark time interval. Yeah. To produce some very slow biochemical reactions leading to the inhibition. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. It's yeah. 30, 30 seconds, something. <laughs> Or the young the photo, the photo chemistry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this uh, actually, this strange thing that the flash interval 30 seconds, you get much more inhibition than if you have a shorter flash interval. It was uh, the, the, the original explanation was that there is a recombination reaction from between QB minus and S2 state or S3 state which uh, creates singlet oxygen, as we, uh, we already discussed earlier. Uh, however, the temperature dependency does not uh, show this, because there should not be such thing here at uh, low temperature. In fact, we do not even see much real temperature dependency in this curve. So the, the reason for this strange behavior of uh, laser flashes in photoemission must be something else. And we do not really know what it is. Biochemistry, 30 seconds of biochemistry, <coughs> this is probably yeah. something very strange. Yeah. yeah, it is very strange. And we, uh, for this, I think we have uh, killed the uh, standard explanation, but we do not have a new one. We have tried the uh, temperature dependency in different uh, wavelengths, and uh, as you can see, if, uh, these are just the uh, uh, raw data, and you can see that uh, in, uh, if you go from ultraviolet to blue to red light, you get a little steeper temperature dependence. And it might be that there is some kind of uh, heterogeneity, that there is a different reaction in, uh, prevailing in ultraviolet than in red light. So it could be like, uh, like temperature dependency you know, of the manganese uh, damage alone in ultraviolet which is going toward temperature dependency of singlet oxygen production in, uh, in uh, uh, visible light. And actually, what is interesting is that singlet oxygen production and uh, photo inhibition have the same temperature dependency. Uh, so this is uh, uh, photo inhibition, uh, as I showed you before, and this is uh, from similar thylakoid preparates uh, measurement of uh, the, the rate of uh, singlet oxygen production. And I think this uh, tells us that singlet oxygen at least has something to do with photo inhibition. Uh, also, uh, 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 it can be either cause or reason. Um, I mean, can be either either the reason for photo inhibition or some kind of uh, side effect of photo inhibition. Uh, 
That's a little measured with tempo. No, this is measured with the uh, with the history method oh, okay. of uh, of uh, Imprebus. It's it's very simple because uh, um, histidine reacts. Uh, very efficiently with signatoxicin. So when you put a lot of histidine uh, together with something that creates signatoxicin, eliminate it, you will see oxygen uh, uh, concentration going down. And when you do this, you, of course, you have to compare without histidine and with histidine, you see much higher uh, loss of oxygen with histidine and that uh, is... Uh, so the difference between protein tradition and signatoxicin here in terms of what did you measure is this. Oxygen is the right You measure different things here. Oh yes, these are completely different things. Uh, this is this is production of oxygen and this is um, inhibition incident. Uh, uh, that, uh, this is just uh, temperature dependencies. They are measured also in a little bit different conditions. To measure signatoxicin, we have to put uh, higher light, more, more light, uh, to 3,000 microns transport for directors, just to get enough signal. Okay. Um, but then, I mean, all this looks like signatoxicin is very important, but then if we try to uh, do uh, signatoxicin scavenger, and we try to hist do, use history for that, Histidine is a good scavenger of singletoxicin. We are not getting any effect on photo inhibition if we put their histidine. If we put more histidine, there will be more inhibition, but that is probably because histidine might not be so good, healthy for, for our thylakoids. And the other thing is that in anaerobic conditions, uh, this is also that we are measuring temperature dependency all the time. We get the same temperature dependency as in aerobic conditions. However, the rate of inhibition of photosystem 2 is much higher. And this does not make sense for the signatoxicin at all. Because in anaerobic conditions, we should not have any signatoxicin. Unless signatoxicin is created with some, some very exotic process. So these experiments do not support singletoxicin, but many experiments uh, do support it. So therefore, uh, the conclusions are, are, uh, are, are a little bit like uh, 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 dualistic. We have uh, anaerobic photoinhibition speaks, speaks against the importance of singletoxicin, and, uh, and, uh, but on the other hand, singletoxicin seems to have a, a role according to other experiments. But let's look at how singletoxicin is produced. Because this is a, also the temperature dependency can, can uh, tell something about this. So, sorry, can I yeah. ask you, yes. so how do we keep uh, anaerobic conditions? In uh, in, we, have, we have actually tried anaerobic conditions with many ways. We have tried uh, this one, particularly is done with glucose oxidase, glucose catalase. Uh, however, we have done it with, uh, by bubbling with, uh, uh, with nitrogen. And so this uh, also produces oxygen, Jenny. Sorry? This also produces oxygen. This produces oxygen, but uh, first of all, to produce oxygen with singlet oxygen, uh, with PS2, you need an electron acceptor. Uh, oxygen can function as an electron acceptor. But if you remove oxygen from the solution, you are not having any electron acceptor, so you are not going to get oxygen from PS2 in anaerobic conditions. There is no oxygen evolution for uh, There is no oxygen evolution if you do not have an electron this, acceptor. This is all the oxygen consumption. Yeah, in the presence of uh, oxygen, yeah, yeah. you will have oxygen so you production and oxygen consumption. Problem. From oxygen, from water to oxygen, actually. So yeah, from water to oxygen, you, you will have both. Cycle. You will always have a, a, a production of oxygen from photosystem two, even if you don't supply an electron acceptor. However, if you remove the oxygen, then you then you are lacking the electron acceptor. You are not going to get any oxygen production. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Therefore. Uh, it, well, we actually tried this also in the presence of uh, uh, DCNU to make sure that there is no electron, uh, that there is absolutely, but it does not make a difference in, in this sense. 
Uh, but let's go to uh, look at the recombination uh, <coughs> reactions. Which one would be the one that produces the cement oxygen? Um, I am crossing out the intersystem crossing in the antennas as the important source of uh, singlet oxygen. I already discussed uh, the uh, rapid recombination reaction and um, uh, the important thing about it is that it, that its single toxin yield is uh, expected to be very small and it has uh, nearly simple temp temperature dependence in the physiological range. Uh, this slow one from the states uh, is uh, already crossed out. But then there is a, a third one which is actually not, uh, uh, which I haven't discussed yet, and it is the recombination reaction which is. Uh, 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 related to the misses of photosystem. And the miss, what is a miss? A miss happens when the oxygen evolving complex uh, refuses to uh, uh, give an electron to P6 annotated plus. What happens then is photosystem 2 is actually quite smart. It does not want to have this P680 plus stay there for a long time. But in something like uh, 100, 200 uh, uh, microseconds, the electron comes back from QA and returns to P680 plus and destroys the, uh, the uh, standard state. And if we look at uh, 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 cycle measurements in flashing light, you see that in about 8% of uh, uh, the flashes, you are not going to get uh, uh, advancement of the cock cycle. No double heating? Uh, well, uh, I am not considering double hits here. Double hits are actually nowadays considered uh, just an artifact of too long uh, flashes that were used in, in uh, cox time. Nowadays people use lasers and, uh, and the fits do not require double hits. So therefore, I think uh, double hit probably is not an important uh, thing, but the misses uh, remain even with the laser uh, flash data. And uh, mostly the uh, uh, misses uh, probably occur during this slow transition from uh, S3 uh, to S0. And uh, there are measurements I mean, it is quite possible that the recombination that is associated with the means is actually uh, causing production of cytotoxicin. And uh, it's interesting to compare the temperature dependency of the misses with the temperature dependency of the cytotoxicin production. So this cytotoxicin curve is the same as we, uh, I showed to you uh, shortly ago. And uh, this uh, temperature dependency of misses from spinach uh, are uh, measured by uh, the messenger group already more than 10 years ago. And uh, I think this uh, looks quite convincing that actually the thing that oxygen production in tylacoids might be caused by uh, 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 the recombination, the misrecombination. And uh, uh, therefore it might be that the misrecombination is actually important for uh, for so the miss recombination simply is that uh, when you have a flat uh, uh, photosystem two uh, which uh, um, in which such separation occurs and QA is reduced. No, no, this way. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, then, uh, um, if the oxygen evolving complex does not in time give an electron to P680, then uh, the electron comes so back. It's malfunction of oxygen evolving Yeah, complex, it right? is malfunction, but it is standard malfunction because it seems that this happens all the time, even in completely <coughs> healthy photos. Even in the leaf, it's healthy. Yeah, most probably yeah. also even, even in, in the, the leaf. leaf. Also, uh, I do not know any measurements from leaves. No, but there is, the, I don't know, I based all the data by, obtained by Govinci, 
I assume that it happens even in the uh, measurements are all issued. And this recombination is uh, quite possible that it can cause uh, production of single toxicin, and then this single toxicin might damage for the
source of single toxicity and this, uh, the NT toxicity that is in the air. However, this is the production of the uh, 16 oxygen. This is the newborn oxygen. And there is absolutely no difference in the uh, amount of uh, newborn oxygen released to the air, which simply means that the newborn oxygen goes away from photosystem 2. It is not converted to, to, uh, to uh, uh, singlet oxygen. Well, sometimes it will maybe come back, but not immediately. Which means that photosystem 2 is uh, completely protected uh, by probably by, uh, uh, by conveying oxygen away from there by these oxygen channels so that uh, uh, oxygen that was just formed in photosystem 2 it is not dangerous to photosystem 2. It is not con con converted to singlet oxygen. Okay, then there is one result which yes. is uh, really, but this is the only one I will show to you. Uh, something, something which uh, has bothered me for uh, two weeks now, and we are still uh, working with this. But this is something very strange. Maybe this is just uh, uh, artifact uh, due to the measurement uh, device, uh, measurement system of singlet oxygen. Here we are using a compound called singlet oxygen sensor green, which is a singlet oxygen trap compound. Changes its uh, uh, fluorescence. Uh, uh, and when we incubate uh, illuminate thylakoids in aerobic conditions and anaerobic conditions with uh, this singlet oxygen sensor green, we get more singlet oxygen in anaerobic conditions than in aerobic conditions, which is completely nonsense to me. Uh, well, uh, we have done uh, already some experiments uh, to see if this is nonsense. And the most strange is that if we kill it, with this treatment, the oxygen evolving complex, we lose this reaction. There is no uh, singlet oxygen production uh, in uh, system measured with this singlet oxygen sensor green if we kill the oxygen evolving complex in, in the this treatment. It's a, the same result you can get uh, using the hydroxyl amine, amine treated? We haven't tried hydroxyl amine yet. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we are we are working with this. But if you have any suggestion what this could be, I would really be happy. Uh, except that we of course try to see if it is some kind of an ar artifact of the singlet oxygen sensor beam. But uh, if we just incubate this dye with the rose pengal in anaerobic conditions, we are not getting singlet oxygen. It is not. Uh, it is not a simple artifact, it is some artifact which has something to do with the oxygen evolving complex. So if it is an artifact. This is very strange. Um, okay, conclusions we have already, uh, already <coughs> gone through. I think Mrs. are responsible for single toxicin. Uh, direct excitation of manganese explains only part of what emission. And uh, then this last result can change everything uh, with regard to seeing the toxicin and protein emission. And these are the people who are involved in, in these uh, studies, HEPA, uh, and most of the single toxicin experiments, and uh, the other people. And we have also two uh, more senior people who are involved in, in uh, uh, this stuff. And Taras is, uh, as you maybe know, a uh, regular uh, visitor in the in my lab and I have worked a lot with these things as well. So thank you very much for for this very long <laughs> seminar. Yes, when you say it is very strange results, you mean that it is empirical fact, but we do not have exactly. It's, it, it is uh, it is explanation. It's correct. We do not have a, a, we do not have an explanation for yeah. this. But, but it's uh, a fact. It's but it fact. is a, it is a very well confirmed. We have done this experiment many times, and we see this result all the time. Uh, you showed the uh, <coughs> temperature dependence for photo uh, inhibition is rather monotonic and really increases with temperature. Yeah. And I remember that the uh, photo damage of liquids uh, occurs stronger in, uh, if in, the, in the cold. Yeah. If the liquids are uh, the cold part, yes, yes yeah, I saw, I remember something. So it's images of this, how 
uh, part of the leaf which was kept in the cold, it is for the damage and the crust which was removed. Yes. And this explanation uh, is just recovery. Yes. Yeah. In this experiment, recovery was exposed. Yes, in these experiments, we, we always uh, uh, explore the recovery yes. because otherwise we would uh, really see the same as you yeah. said. Yeah. You, you saw that. Yeah. You told us. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yes, I have a minor comment. Uh, because, of course, a lot of people are doing experiments related with understanding the mechanism of photo inhibition. But according to my understanding, it is impossible to find universe mechanism because we are doing experiments in different type of organisms. For example, if you take low plants, they are able to synthesize a lot of low molecular mass components like trihalose, which is a very good quencher of reactive oxygen species. In the case high plants, you do not have the trihalose, you have sacrose, you have glycobetaine, I don't know, maybe they are. So therefore, is I am correct when I say that it is impossible to get universe mechanism. I do not think that uh, that um, um, this would uh, uh, make it impossible to, to to design a universal mechanism. There are uh, differences in, uh, in in amounts of uh, compounds like the carotenoids and still we try to look at the universal mechanism that would be able to uh, to explain uh, the effects of these uh, quenchers like carotenoids or phenols. Uh, I think uh, they are um, this kind of differences between organisms should not be considered as a, uh, making it impossible but uh, they are like uh, challenges and not uh, obstacles. Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay. But I agree that there, there are differences between organisms. But what is strange is that there are not big differences in the temperature dependency. There are differences in the action spectrum, but not so much in temperature dependency. Any other questions? So please come again. <laughs>